ambulance. Just a patient breathing. He's been stabbed in the chest. Okay, is he breathing? Just about, I think, yes. Okay, is he awake? He is, but he's still just about awake. Liam. Tell me exactly Liam. what's happened. He's just walking the house and his lad jumped up and stabbed him. 18-year-old Liam Gray collapsed in his grandfather's kitchen after he was stabbed in the chest. Police were there quickly, ambulance were there quickly. Extensive efforts were made to try and save Liam. It was horrible. You could just see that there was blood all over him, and I remember my mum just shouting, I love you, Liam. When you see your first mate's eyes roll to the back of his head, and he's covered in blood, you know he's dead. Like, straight up, you know he's dead. Liam's family were devastated to discover his killer was someone they had welcomed into their home. His friend, 17-year-old Jonathan Treadgold. I've known Jonathan for years and years. He used to live on the same street. Versace blue jeans, I am you. But what caused Treadgold to murder his best friend? I wish I could just ask him why. I just don't understand why you'd take somebody so good away and what Liam ever did wrong. Liam would be 20 this year. Down here, we've got some more pictures of Liam when he was a little bit younger. I think he was about 14 there. And uh, that's Liam when he was even littler. <laughs> Liam and Paige. He was a nightmare to me, obviously. I was my little brother, and we just clashed so much. But we was really close as well. He was, I was like his second mum, I think, because my mum had me quite young and Liam quite young. Me and Liam was really close growing up. We was always fighting, always <laughs> arguing. <laughs> but when we got older, we just clicked like nobody could ever get us apart. <laughs> Liam grew up in Mansfield in Nottinghamshire and liked to be the centre of attention. He liked I Want It That Way by the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> Loved that song. <laughs> Liam just dancing around in the kitchen um, with a mop or a sweeping brush. <laughs> It sounded like a cat was being strangled. <laughs> that was Liam's character. He was just so happy, happy-go-lucky. As he got older, Liam struggled at school and at home, but his outlook improved when he moved in with his granddad, Pops, not far from the family home. Pops, he keeps me on a level. He keeps me sane. He's a legend. I'd be lost without him. Liam's best friend, Reese lived across the road. The pair were inseparable. I've known him all my life. We grew up together, went to school together and everything. We were just a bit crazy, to be fair. <laughs> Everyone would be like, oh, Liam and Reese together again. Get ready. Oh, You'd always see Reese and Liam bouncing down the street together with massive smiles on the face. They were like brothers. They were inseparable. They were together nearly all day, every day. You'd never catch Reese without Liam or Liam without Reese. They were like a couple, really, <laughs> like any, any husband and wife. No one would come in between them. As little lads, we used to fight with each other. <laughs> Get ready. We'd fall out, but then we'd be best mates again anyway. I loved him, I did. There was, there, was a, there was a special place in my heart for that lad. Not long after Liam moved into Pop's house, he would introduce Reese to another friend of his, Jonathan Treadgold. Do you know what? When I first met him, I thought he was all right, to be fair. He was a good lad. And we all just ended up getting on. It was kind of like, I don't know, three musketeers, <laughs> if you want to say that. But Jonathan's upbringing couldn't have been more different from the loving home that Liam had always known. He used to live on the same street that we lived on, but then I think he ended up um, being taken, taken into care. After he witnessed domestic violence and drug use, Jonathan was moved into accommodation with extra support. 
I didn't hear of him for, for years and years, and then obviously Liam just turned up with him. I, I weren't really happy about Liam being around him. Um, he, he just sent, they, they just sent something about him that, you know, I couldn't put my finger on. I've heard stories about him, but I didn't take any of that into account because I wanted to see for myself what he was like. And every time I was around him, he was all right. He was quite polite to me. He was always a bit of a like a, a mad guy, something like you never really. He was uh, you'd see him, you'd see him for like two days, and then he'd disappear again. <laughs> he was just always like causing trouble, getting in trouble by the police. Liam tried to get him out of trouble and tried to teach him right in life. Tread Gold comes from a very disruptive and chaotic familial set of circumstances. Father doesn't seem to have been around. Uh, his mother had had addiction problems. Uh, Tread Gold has been in care, uh, disruptive schooling experiences, and therefore there is a kind of chaos in relation to uh, Tread Gold's life, um, rather than one of stability, which seemed to me to characterise Liam's life. In one sense, it's hard to, to understand why they would become friends. Jonathan had got a, uh, I shall say, a dysfunctional background, sort of previous convictions around drugs, um, and what I would say is relatively minor sort of criminality, but frequent uh, previous convictions as well. Jonathan started getting into trouble with police at the age of 14 but Liam tried to support him. The previous Maybank holiday, we'd had quite a big gathering where we'd had a, a Wyan-themed party on my mum's back garden, and he attended that, Jonathan did, so he got, in a, he got in a drunken state. Then I left the party, and it turned out that he did get quite angry and, and did end up assaulting someone. I think Liam thought, you know, he could you know, solve some of his problems, you know, by being his friend and, you know, taking him under his wing. Liam said, I've been there at one point, I've been bad in my life, but I've turned around, so so could he. What's interesting is that it was Liam who asked Treadgold to join his friendship group with Reese because he feels sorry for him. And I wonder to what extent Treadgold was aware of their friendship being based on sympathy for him and for his circumstances. Liam was loyal to his friends, but his life changed when he turned 17 and he discovered he was going to be a dad. He was over the moon. <laughs> Buzzing. He, he, was, he was dead happy. He was dead happy. He started to grow up a bit more and, and realised that he had to become a family man now when he had a child to look after in the future. Liam started spending less time with Jonathan and Reese as he prepared for his new arrival and had plans to move to Birmingham. I was sad that, you know, m my boy was going, going to live somewhere else, but it wasn't that far. It's about an hour and a half away from here. He was ready for the move ready to start his family. Him moving out was always a big thing. He wanted to move out, I wanted to get my own place. <laughs> so and then he can do what he wants and he can have it looking how he wants it and stuff like that, do you know what I mean? But for Jonathan, Liam's plans to leave Mansfield didn't go down well. For Treadgold, Liam's move to Birmingham is threatening because he imagines he'll never see him again. For Treadgold, here's yet another person that he can't rely on, and the safe space that Liam has been able to create through his family for Treadgold was also going to, therefore, in Treadgold's view, be denied to him. He can't imagine that the disruption will ever be repaired. I truly believe that Chekhov probably saw that his mate was about to embark on what was going to be a brilliant, brilliant part of his life, whereas his life was carnage, it was chaos. On the 1st of August 2019, 18-year-old Liam Gray was getting ready to move to Birmingham. 
but he was planning one final party with his two closest friends. We planned to go to the pub, have a few drinks before Liam left to go to his new house. He was going literally the next day, so I assumed he didn't want to have too many drinks and like not wake up and have to rush around and do everything. <laughs> we planned it all out. It was going to be a really good day, to be fair. The friends set off to buy some alcohol from a nearby shop before returning to Pop's house. It was a summer's day. They were having a drink in the afternoon in the garden. It was a time of celebration, if you like, a, a, about Liam probably entering the next part of his life. Liam and the boys enjoyed Snapchatting with friends and recorded some videos whilst they were at the house. I know Jono was in some um, tracky bottoms at the time and Liam basically said, oh, you're going to smarten yourself up to go to the pub or... Because Jono was actually only 17, and recently and we're 18, just. Um, so he said, oh, smart yourself up a little bit so we know you're going to get served. After finishing their drinks, the boys got ready for the pub. Liam lent Jonathan a pair of his jeans and they left. It's not the three musketeers, it's the three <laughs> Hi, your brother. Hi, Jonah. <laughs> But while walking through the park, the atmosphere quickly changed when Reese received a message from the boyfriend of Treadgold's sister. Treadgold shares that text with Reese and with Liam, and Liam makes some comment that he would sort um, uh, Treadgold's sister's boyfriend out. Liam had said something I'll hit him. So Liam was in actual fact, sticking up for Jono's little sister. Um, and then Jono basically said, oh, you're not going to hit him, he's just a kid. And uh, John got right mad about it. It's interesting that Treadgold's response to that is very critical. And there is something there that I think reveals to us aspects of Treadgold's earlier life, aspects of his relationship with significant others in his life, either in care or within his domestic um, circumstances. Jonathan became increasingly angry after the incident, and Liam told him to go back to the house and take off his jeans. He was just moaning about it, and Liam just says, oh, if you're going to be like that, go on, mate. And uh, he says, oh, leave them jeans at Pops's. But it was an important day, so they went after Jonathan. Liam says to me, oh, she will, she will go and get him because I don't want this day ruined, do you know what I mean? We're all mates. She will, and I said, yeah, let's go and fetch him. Pops was at home when Jonathan got back to return Liam's jeans. But he remained there in the living room. When Liam and Reese arrived four minutes later, Reese stayed outside while Liam went in to smooth things over. John's come running out, I've stabbed him, I've killed him. I was like, I thought, shut up, no, you haven't. And he's ran off, and that's when I was like, okay, he might have actually done something here. I've gone in, and uh, Liam stood there, and he's got a handful of tea towels off of Pops' radiator, stuck him to his chest, and gone, ring an ambulance. And I pulled my phone out, and I didn't know what to do, so I rang the ambulance and gave my phone to Pop. Ambulance, is the patient breathing? <laughs> He's been stabbed in the chest. Okay, is he breathing? Just about, I think, yes. Okay, is he awake? He is, but he's still just about awake, are you? Liam. And he's walked around the city and he, he, he fell to the floor and he was holding his chest. Pops was putting pressure on to where he got stabbed and that, and uh, kind of saying to him, like, stay with us, like, come on. Liam. Liam. I knew we were dead, man.
Liam. Okay, just tell me exactly Liam. what's happened. Yeah, do you know when you see your best mate's eyes roll to the back of his head and you kind of know he's dead, don't you? He's just walked in the house and his lad jumped up and stabbed him. Okay, you're doing really, really well. Now, do you know who the person is who stabbed him? Yes, what? John Threadgold. John? Threadgold. Is there anybody able to let the crew in? Yes, I sent somebody on the front. I ran out into the front to get the ambulance and that, and when the police came, and it was like, recent, I said, yeah, and he's put me back at car, and I said, Sturm, I know he's dead, tell me he's dead. Just arrived on scene, one crew. Police were there quickly, ambulance were there quickly. Obviously, primary concern is to try and save Liam. The crew are with the patient now. At Liam's mum's house, news that the emergency services were at Pop's house travelled fast. I weren't feeling too well. I remember being in bed um, and my younger daughter of the two uh, rushing in the bedroom um, saying that she thought something had happened to Pops. Someone messaged me on social media and said, like, I saw lots of police cars outside of the house. From the the amount of emergency services that were there, I knew, I knew there was something serious. Afterwards, someone messaged saying, like, John who's stabbed Liam. And then I went and told Mum, and she just broke down crying. He's, like, she was hysterical. And I went into panic mode. Um, I was just so frantically trying to, you know, process what had, what had happened. Right, he stopped breathing. He's unconscious and he stopped breathing. As paramedics battled to save Liam's life, Superintendent Kevin Broadhead launched a manhunt for Jonathan Treadgold. Whilst the incident was unfolding, we received a call from a local business owner who had, who had seen something suspicious. A male that actually climbed into the rear yard of a local sandwich shop, and he was challenged by the owner. Treadgold began making allegations about the incident, suggesting he had been under threat. It was through things he was telling the sandwich shop owner, making some sort of allegation of he'd been involved in some serious incidents involving some crime. Immediately, our call dispatchers linked that back to the scene that had already taken place at Gladstone Street. Liam's mum and sister arrived at Pop's house at 3.15 p.m. to find emergency services working tirelessly to try and save him. I was down near the house, as close as I could be, and I remember my mum coming onto the street and she was just, she was a mess. I think I, could, I, was, I was crying, I was hysterical. There was crowds and crowds of people, emergency services, police cars, ambulance. I remember running up to, um, to Pops' front door um, and a police officer dragging me away. Liam? Has he, he stopped breathing then? They were doing some work on him. They had to um, cut open his, um, his chest to, to get to his heart, um, you know, to massage his heart, to try and keep it going. He's, he's breathing at the minute. They were in two minds whether to take him in the air ambulance, but then decided against it because they couldn't work on him. So they brought him out of the property, and as they were putting him in an ambulance, a police officer took me round, and I, um, I managed to say, you know, I love you, and I just hope he heard me, because that was the last thing that I managed to say to him while he was, you know, still alive. A police officer got me, my mum and pops in the back of the police car and they blew light at us all the way to Queen's Medical Centre behind the ambulance. We thought that everything was going to be fine, like they'd done everything they could in the house and they was going to do more on the way there. Meanwhile, police were closing in on Jonathan Treadgold. After a 999 call from the sandwich shop owner, he had fled across Mansfield. His mother lives sort of within a square mile of, of the scene of the incident. So it, it's my belief that he, he was sort of like heading back that way. 
A call from another member of the public alerted police to his whereabouts at a family friend's house. His arrest was captured on officer's body-worn video. Step back! Step back! At 3.30 p.m., Jonathan Treadgold was arrested just 30 minutes after he stabbed Liam. But initially, it was just on suspicion of GBH. Eat the beef! And he told police officers it was Liam who tried to attack him first. Stabbing me! At this moment in time, you're under arrest on suspicion of GBH. You don't have to say anything, mate. I understand if you mention one question, something which they try and quote anything you do say, we have any evidence. Do you understand? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the hospital, doctors attempted to save Liam with open heart surgery. But an hour and a half later, he was pronounced dead. He was just 18 years old. I just remember a doctor walking in with two nurses, and I, I knew then the look on the doctor's face that Liam had passed. <sighs> they didn't even have to say anything. I just knew, and I think I said to them, he's gone, hasn't he? And um, they said, yeah, we regret to tell you, you know, that, that he has gone, yeah, he's passed away. I just remember getting a phone call and can remember looking at my phone and just seeing mum calling, and I didn't answer it, and then, she ran again and I always said, I know what you're going to say. And she said that he's gone. I just had a feeling like, I don't know what. I just felt like a piece of me was gone. I just can remember collapsing to the floor and uh, there were so many people surrounding me, but I can't even remember what was going through my head right then. I remember running out of the room. I couldn't breathe. I began having a panic attack outside. It was just unimaginable, undescribable pain that I felt right then. <sighs> My heart just shattered. The news of Liam's death turned the case into a murder investigation. Jonathan Treadgold was in custody, but the police would need to prove exactly what had happened. Superintendent Broadhead's team set out to assess the crime scene, speak to the key witnesses, and review any CCTV. There is no greater responsibility as a police officer than being asked to investigate the death of another human being. And it's at these times when you go into the absolute minute detail of everything, it's your duty to do that. And our duty to Liam and to Liam's family was to actually go into this detail. In the interview room, police were shocked when Jonathan admitted to stabbing Liam. But he claimed he had to, to protect himself and suggested Liam was a violent bully. He said that Liam was, you know, responsible for assaulting him in, in the past, um, and he got injuries that could uh, corroborate, could substantiate that as well. Treadgold lifted up his shirt to show officers some scars. He claimed Liam was the cause of them and had previously attacked him with a knife. He wants to build up a, a history of abuse, of behaviour against Liam that actually would, uh, in some way, uh, mitigate um, the, his actions at the time. His claims went further, saying he had run away from Liam following an argument in the park. But despite an eyewitness account of the stabbing from Liam's granddad, Pops, Treadgold tried to assert a different version of events that Liam had tried to stab him first and he turned and got the knife off Liam and basically it was self-defense, which obviously from Pops' account of it and Reese's account of it, that was not the case at all. Police needed to piece together the events leading up to Liam's death, so investigators examined CCTV in the area. The movements of both Liam and Jonathan prior to the incident and then Jonathan after the incident were mostly captured on CCTV and took place in a relatively small area of Mansfield. 
Earlier in the day, cameras caught the boys buying alcohol in a corner shop. They appeared on good terms. When you actually see those images is the tragic part of this for me, because on their way out, they seem jokey, happy, getting on. But when police looked at the CCTV from the sandwich shop, Treadgold was clearly agitated and desperate to give his version of events to witnesses. In my opinion, he was already um, offloading his defense. When police seized further CCTV footage, a clearer picture began to emerge. So we're able to piece together the chronology of, of the movements of, of all three. We know that the lads came out of Gladstone Street and walked onto the main street of Nougat Lane and walked in the general direction of a pub. There was a minor dispute. The boys had stopped off in the local park where they had an argument but there were no cameras there to capture the incident. In his interview, Treadgold claimed he ran from the park in fear of Liam and went back to Grandad Pop's house. But CCTV told a different story. In it, he can be clearly seen walking back and not running. His account changed a fair few times, and we know that because of the CCTV and um, witness movements. Treadgold turns back up the address on Gladstone Street. Liam is with Reese. Reese stays in the garden. Liam goes inside the address, and that's where the altercation took place. Knowing all of this, Superintendent Broadhead interviewed Treadgold for a second time. Treadgold admitted picking up the knife, but still maintained it was self-defense tried to say that actually he was waving the knife in a sort of um, get off me type type motion. So he was waving it around in that sort of motion and that's how he, he ended up, um, how Liam ended up being stabbed. The police had Liam's killer in custody, but they needed to prove if it was murder. Police now returned to the CCTV to investigate the moments after the attack. Just over a minute after Liam entered Pop's house, Treadgold was captured on CCTV on Gladstone Street and then across to the sandwich shop. This time, he was running. You know, it's five minutes of madness. The minute of taking somebody's life is one of those five minutes. The next four minutes, you are still in a high. You're still disinhibited. You're still not making sense. You're still behaving irrationally. It's an extraordinary determination to draw attention to himself and what he's done, not because he's trying to celebrate what he's done, in my view, but because he's overwhelmed and trying to process what he's done and make sense of it for himself in a way that he can't quite do because he understands instinctively that he's killed his best friend. Treadgold's behavior in the CCTV suggested he wasn't telling the whole truth. Police retrieved the murder weapon from the house and sent it off for analysis. It was a, a kitchen knife, just a, um, a standard domestic kitchen knife that belonged to uh, the household that was, was in his kitchen. It was a big kitchen knife, like six inch sort of thing. He, he chucked it. He, he, he must have stabbed him, pulled it out and chucked it. With Liam's blood on it, police had no doubt the knife had been used to kill him. It also had Treadgold's fingerprints on it, but he still maintained he'd used it in self-defense against Liam. So detectives needed to determine if there was any historical evidence that could support his claims of bullying. Absolutely huge effort went into a review of all social services records, anything that, that was any other, what we call third party material that relates to um, both Liam and Jonathan to see whether there was any information within held by any of our partner agencies that could substantiate any of Treadgold's claims and there were none. 
but the records did reveal that Treadgold had a history of self-harming. This indicated to police that the wounds he'd shown them could have been previously self-inflicted. He got some minor injuries that we believe were self-harm injuries, but he, um, he tried to say that, um, that Liam was you know, responsible for assaulting him in, in the past. What he's trying to do is give himself a defense, but what you're hearing is Treadgold's limited range of narratives that he has available to him from the circumstances of his own life. He knows that he's self-harmed. He knows that when he gets drunk, he can move from being quiet to aggressive. So he's got a limited number of narratives to fall back on. In a background review, it was Treadgold that was found to have an extensive criminal record. First arrested at the age of 14, he had faced charges of criminal damage and threatening behavior. And just six weeks before the attack, he was convicted of assaulting his girlfriend. He was always a bit of a like a, a mad guy, but there wasn't anything that would make me think, oh yeah, he's gonna he's gonna kill my best mate. He is. When police breathalyzed Treadgold hours after his arrest, he was still found to be three times over the drink drive limit. There does seem to be an element of when he drinks to excess that he switches his personality very quickly, that he will become aggressive. But you see with Treadgold, whether he's sober or whether he's been drinking, you see a young man who has had a chaotic life and adults in that chaotic life have always let him down. So there's a consistency also in terms of his behavior, that he's angry he wants to express anger, and he finds that difficult to do when he's sober and easier to do when he's been drinking. The police then received key findings from the post-mortem report. He tried to say that actually he was waving the knife in a sort of um, get off me type type motion. So he's waving it around in that sort of motion, and that's how he, he ended up, um, how Liam ended up being stabbed. But Liam's body did not have any defensive wounds on his arms or hands. The pathologist actually could, could show that it was actually a jabbing, stabbing motion as opposed to a slashing motion. The blade went straight into his, straight into his heart. Police then assessed a wealth of evidence. Witness statements, CCTV, social services records, and post-mortem and forensic results. They had enough to charge 17-year-old Jonathan Treadgold with the murder of Liam Gray. But he protested his innocence and pleaded not guilty. His play made me really, really angry even more because why couldn't he just admit his guilt and admit what he'd done was wrong and show some kind of remorse? Um, but. That wasn't him, obviously. Because of his not guilty plea, Liam's body was subjected to a second post-mortem at the request of Treadgold's defense team. I thought it was absolutely disgraceful. I thought, how can he put him, put him and us through anymore? He's, he, he's taken Liam away from us. How can, he, how can he do this to us as well? I was really worried that um, he'd get away with it. 